Hi everyone, let's continue macroeconomics and in this session we are going to cover a classical theory of output and employment. Number of research scholars, they told me, ma'am, why don't you prepare a video on classical theory of output and employment? We understand who, who were classical economists. Adam Smith, David Ricardo, J.S. Mill and J.B. Say are the noted classical economists and we can say Adam Smith as father of economics, everybody knows. And later on, Keynes, who had given, who had called all economists as classical economists, who preceded him. And uh, basically, those were the classical economists. They believe in free market economy. That means free reign, we can call it. There is always a full employment of labor. They believe in, there is the full employment uh, situation is there. And there is sufficient demand for output produced. So this was the assumptions by the classical economist. And they believe they focus more on the supply side with a little emphasis on the demand side of the growth process. And next is the assumption is they thought that if price mechanism in a capitalist economy is allowed to work freely without any interface by the government, there is always a tendency towards the full employment in it. So ultimately, we can say they believe in full employment and there is no intervention by the government. That means work freely without any inter in interface by the government. And as well as they admit that an advanced capitalist economies, often certain circumstances arise due to which they are not in full employment equilibrium. So we can say certain economies forces like working of free price mechanism automatically operate so that to move to the economy towards the full employment. And uh, one more thing, uh, this theory, this one is the classical theory. And uh, this one is they, they they believe in determinants of output and employment propounded by the this this one is the classical economist as well as we can say Ricardo and Adam Smith levels of income and employment are governed by fixed capital stock and one hand and inventories of the wage good on the other side. So that means they believe in two things. One is the fixed capital stock. Another one is the inventories of the wage goods. So classical theory is basically uh, based on two notions. Number one is says law of market and wage price flexibility. So we are going to cover up in this video both these notions. One is says law of market and the one is wage price flexibility. So first assumption that is um, it is always enough expenditure or aggregate demand to purchase the total production at full employment level of resources that is the first assumption and second assumption is this even when deficiency of the aggregate demand arises the price and wages would change in such a way that real production employment and income will not decline they believe in so first is says law what is says law how come that this law came into practice so this was the this law has been given by French economist J.V. Say. That is why it is we are calling it Say's law of market. What is actually this law? Supply creates its own demand. They believe in supply creates its own demand. When we are supplying continuously products, so it will create automatically, it will create its own demand as per J.V. Say. So every production of goods creates income equal to the value of goods produced and these incomes are spent on purchasing these goods. So because of Say's law expressed that all unemployed and idle laborers and other resources when employed for production create their own demand because we are manufacturing, we are producing. Obviously, for this production purpose, we require more labor, we require raw material, we require resources. So because of this, they will create their own demand because they are generating income. So as well as uh, income which is not spent on consumer goods and thus saved will become investment expenditure. That means, that means this law says that income we are not spending to purchase consumer goods, consumable goods. So we are saving. So ultimately, the saving is going towards the investment side. So that is become investment expenditure. It is the rate of interest mechanism that brings about equality between saving and investment. So because against this, what we are getting against saving, we are getting interest. 
So investment equals saving. So thus leakage caused by the saving in the income flow is made up by the investment expenditure. In this way, given productive capacity continues to be fully utilized and no problem deficiency of the demand arises because of this. But second notion said wage price flexibility. As per the classical economist, production does not depend only on aggregate demand, but also in the prices of the products. Prices of the product depends upon all four factors. Uh, we can say land, labor, capital, and in land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur. That means rent, wages, as well as we can say interest and profit. So all these things depends upon. But here is in as per classical economists, we are talking about only wages. So if the wages will become high, ultimately cost of production would also increase. If wages is going towards the lower side, so cost of production would also decline. So this theory, they said, at what extent the sellers or producers will tolerate the decline in prices of the products? To make their business profitable, they reduce the prices of the factors of production, such as labor. So ultimately, if somebody would like to reduce their prices, they would reduce their labor, I mean wages, All the, or the, we can call it cost of production, they would like to reduce it. So ultimately, what would happen? There is the fall in wages of the labor. All workers will get employment. If some workers do not want to work at reduced wages, they remain unemployed and they are termed as voluntary unemployment. So that is why we are calling it not, not, not unemployment situation because we are offering them jobs, we are offering them work, but they don't want to work at the lower wages. So just because of this, so we are calling it voluntary unemployed, voluntary unemployment. That means they are not willing to work at these wages. So these are the two conditions of classical theory of, this one is the classical theory of employment and income. So I hope this uh, output and employment, this theory is clear to you. And uh, in the next theory, in the next video, I'm going to cover up Keynes theory. And uh, we will compare both these classical theory as well as Keynes theory. So I hope this video would be helpful to you. Keep watching. Stay tuned.